Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's great to be here this afternoon. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to speak this afternoon on Bill C-15, the Budget Implementation Act. I would like to focus my comments today on one particular area that is of great interest to me and that our government is dedicated to enhancing uh, and that will lead to a stronger economic growth, growth, growth profile for our country, the field of innovation. When I think of innovation, I look at my riding. And in the city of Vaughan, there are literally thousands of innovative companies. One that comes to mind is Mercom Group of Companies, a company that has been in existence for many years and who own, whose owners are good family friends. The Mercom Group of Companies is the largest independent designer, manufacturer, and distributor of intel intelligent building solutions. It competes against U.S. giants like General Electric, Tyco, and Johnson Controls, employing literally hundreds of Canadians. Over half of its products are exported outside of Canada to more than 95 countries. Mercom employs high, a highly skilled workforce, including scientists, engineers, and hires the best from Canadian universities. Mr. Speaker, this company is one example of a Canadian success story. It is, an, it is an innovator. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to add that I'm proud to say that another company in my riding, Vision Plastics, part of the Vision Group of Companies investing $150 million in Vaughan, uh, will be employing literally three, three to 400 uh, Canadians and is set to open uh, this coming fall. I'll have more to say on that in the months ahead. Bill C-15 is a part of the legislative framework our government is attempting to put in place to encourage companies like this to start, to grow, to remain in Canada and to succeed. That is what makes me happy about what our company is doing in terms of its commitment to innovation. We are going in the right direction, a direction that will lead to better jobs, better benefits and a strong and growing economy and strengthens the middle class. Mr. Speaker, what do we mean when we use the word, that word innovation? Certainly it means different things to different people. I just cited an example of what innovation means in my community. But in the broader context, our government is daring to dream of doing something smarter, faster and better to improve the status quo, to improve the quality of life in whatever way is possible. Fundamentally, we're trying to find solutions to the big problems, to the big issues that challenge us. Fundamentally, we're trying to find solutions to the big problems. That means social innovation. It means embracing the premise that a clean environment and a strong economy go hand in hand. It means understanding that some of our most important infrastructure is not only roads and bridges, but is also digital infrastructure in the context of a knowledge economy. It means moving beyond individual interests to see the collective opportunities. Mr. Speaker, technology has fundamentally transformed the way Canadians access information, pay for goods and services, interact with each other, and build communities. At the same time, technology has now reached a new level. It is more than just communications. Technology has become transfor a transformative tool in addressing global challenges like climate change and poverty. Where industrial pro progress once came at a cost to the environment, nowadays technology has, em has emerged as our greatest tool in clean growth and healthy growth and prosperous societies. Our government has defined a new vision in 2016, a vision to build Canada as a center of global innovation, renowned for its science and technology, creative and entrepreneurial citizens, and globally competitive companies offering high-quality products and services, much like the Mercom Group of Companies. We are well positioned for this. We have world-leading research institutions, creative and innovative entrepreneurs, such as the Mercom Group of Companies, businesses and commercial organizations that can transform breakthroughs into the, in the laboratories into products that enhance the lives of millions, and that is the lives of millions of Canadians but also the lives of people around this, this earth that we inhabit. Canada's innovative society already creates jobs for the middle class, enhances home growth ta homegrown talent, and helps companies expand beyond our borders. However, we can and we will do much more. And I repeat that, we will do much more, Mr. Speaker. What is now an emerging economic opportunity will become the foundation of a modern 21st century Canada. We will transform our economy from one that depends on a few resources to one whose resources are, at, are as infinite as our diversity, our creativity, and our talent. Through 2016 and 2017, we will define a bold new plan, the innovation agenda. Bill C-15 is a part of that blueprint to get to the innovation agenda. This will be a plan for change. It will define clear outcomes and pinpoint milestones toward achieving them. It will be cross, a cross-government effort drawing on Canadian and international experts in clean technology, health sciences, advanced manufacturing, digital technology, resource development, and much more. It is important for us to be leaders in this field. We all hear that word ecosystem, 
The ecosystem is important. In prior periods, there may have been an auto plant where suppliers would coexist in the surrounding area. However, today that has changed. Today with an ecosystem, we may have many small companies operating clusters throughout the world, and we need to be at the forefront of that. We need to be a part of that. That is what's going to create a strong and growing economy and strengthen our middle class. To help us realize this vision, Budget 2016 proposes several interim measures to promote research and accelerate business growth. It would focus new federal support for science on world-class discovery research, maintain funding for the commercialization of promising scientific discoveries, begin to orient, orient federal business support towards those firms with ambitions to grow, and build a better evidence base to identify gaps, evaluate performance, and inform future decisions. The rules are changing around us. In the old bricks and mortar economy, a bigger factory meant not just more output and wealth, but more jobs. That is not, in the, not the case in the new digital economy. We need to enable and support this change. We also need to ensure that we do so mind, mindfully and in a way it does not stifle innovation. The innovation leaders are, in the, are the future and must be equipped with the skills they will need to succeed. Mr. Speaker, post-secondary and other research institutions are the frontline agents in fostering science and research excellence. They help train the Canadian workforce of tomorrow, today, and they help train my young daughters. They also help to create the knowledge base necessary for the private sector and policy makers who are looking to build a thriving and clean economy. To ensure that these facilities continue to support our research and innovators, Budget 2016 will invest up to $2 billion over three years in a new post-secondary institution's strategic investment fund. If investing in the spaces that enhance our innovative potential is the first step, the second step is most certainly investing in Canadian researchers themselves, particularly those on the cusp of new discoveries. In Canada, this funding typically flows from the federal granting councils, which include the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, and the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council. These councils already receive $2.8 billion annually to support research and training of highly qualified people at universities and colleges across the country. This year and going forward, I'm proud to state that our government will provide an additional $95 million to support discovery research, the highest amount of new annual funding in over a decade. To ensure that federal support for research, including through the granting councils, is strategic and effective, we will undertake a comprehensive review of federal support for fundamental science. We want to be sure that we are providing the right support to the right leaders and that the fields of research reflect shared Canadian priorities. Our government will also continue to support Canada's strength in genomics, the study of the entire genetic code that is fueling innovations across a number of success sectors. We will provide $237.2 million over the next four years to support the pan-Canadian activities of genomics. Well before genomics, Canad Canadians carved out a special expertise in stem cell research. It started over 50 years ago when two Canadian, two of Canada's own doctors proved their very existence. Since that time, stem cell research has evolved into one of the world's greatest promises, with significant implications for medical treatments, commercial products, and public policy. We will provide up to $12 million over two years in support of the stem cell network, so it will continue to provide bridges that connect researchers and professionals through training and outreach activities. To conclude, in the 21st century global economy, Canada needs to be innovative to be a leader. We need to be leaders. Our businesses need to be fostered and encouraged. We need to be embrace the world of science, technology, engineering, and math. We need to diversify our economy to enable growth and prosperity throughout the country. We need to turn the page in the last 10 years. In addition to these goals, I believe that Canada has a strong foundation to build upon. We have one of the best educated populations in the world. We have one of the highest university investments in research and development. We have one of the world's best investments, climates, and we are a leading edge of global trade. Let us be proud of Canada, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I, I thank my colleague for his speech. One of the things that uh, I, I, uh, I have significant concerns about and my constituents have significant concern about in this budget uh, is the elimination of the small business hiring credit. It's hard for me to understand why the government would eliminate a measure 
specifically aimed at helping small businesses hire more people. And then also the, uh, the, the movement away from the election commitment made by the Liberal Party as well as all parties in this place, in fact, uh, to follow up with the commitment to lower small business taxes. Small businesses effectively will experience a tax increase, but also specifically the elimination of that hiring credit. I wonder if the member can explain, in light of the things he said in his speech, and, and I think you know good intentions, no doubt, uh, but I wonder if he can explain these policies in light of those intentions. The Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank my, my colleague for his question. Um, I would like to, like to add a few comments, not for spe specifically for small business. First of all, uh, there will be in, in the uh, foreseeable future uh, EI reductions for small businesses. So small business benefit, businesses will benefit for employment insurance reductions on their on their premium. So that's going to be a great thing for for small businesses. Second of all, uh, we understand that small businesses are the backbone of the economy. Uh, we like them to scale up and grow, uh, but we also need to have a healthy middle class and strong demand for small businesses to prosper. And that's what our budget aims to do. Our budget aims to grow the economy by providing uh, middle class tax cuts, which now currently benefit 9 million Canadians. We're going to be introducing the Child Canada benefit, which will benefit 9 out of 10 families. And you know what? They're going to spend their money. They're going to spend their money at small businesses to help them grow and prosper as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question and comment. Questions and comments. The honourable member for Regina Louvain. Mr. Speaker, the uh, member for Vaughan uh, Woodbridge uh, spoke about the role of post-secondary education in the innovation economy. The main way in which the federal government supports post-secondary education is through the Canada Social Transfer to provinces, which helps to fund uh, universities. I was struck by the fact that the Canada Social Transfer in Budget 2016 is exactly the same going forward as what was projected in Budget 2015. So we're not seeing any increase in funding for post-secondary education uh, from the new government, and I wonder if the member for Vaughan Woodbridge could explain that and could give us some sense of when the government might actually provide a higher level of federal funding for our universities and colleges. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my Honourable, my, my colleague, for uh, that question. What I will say is that we have made a large commitment to post-secondary institutions. We made a commitment to individuals that are enrolling at post-secondary institutions. If you look at our Canada student, uh, the loan grants and, and uh, debt repayment schedules that we put in, in, in place in the budget, in Bill C-15, uh, that you'll see a large, uh, you know, literally uh, multi-billion dollar investment uh, in our universities in, and in our students, uh, per se, uh, so, so when someone does exit uh, university and begins working, they'll have some time uh, frame to accumulate some capital before they need to repay uh, their, their student loans. So we're helping on one hand in terms of investing in infrastructure in universities, but we're also helping on the other hand uh, with students enrolling in, in universities, special, spe especially and particularly middle and low income students that do need that assistance uh, going to university so they're not uh, burdened by uh, such a, a high debt burden when they exit university. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have time for a brief question. Questions, comment? The Honourable Member for uh, Calgary Shepherd. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the Member Vaughan Woodbridge for his intervention so far. I I do a lot of work with him on the Kurdish files, so I know he's learned and he really studies up on issues like this. But I just can't believe that he would support a budget that is going to spend hundred, over $100 billion. And in this budget alone, it's going to be $29.4, $25.6 billion, 80% of which is just program spending. It's just spending on programs. And we're going to pass it on to the next generation to tell them, you have to pay the bill for the wants of today, not the needs of today, but the wants of today. So how does he answer that? How can you support such a bad budget where the vast majority of the spending is not on infrastructure, it's not on assets, it's bad program spending. So how can you answer that? How can you support this budget? The Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge in one minute or less. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and uh, rightly, my, my colleague, I, we do do some good work on the Kurdish file, so please work with them on that. What I will say is, is I, you know, I just defer to what uh, others have commented about infrastructure investments, whether it's the former Federal Reserve Chairman uh, Ben Bernanke or whether it's the current uh, Bank of Canada Governor uh, Stephen Polos, is that uh, key investments in infrastructure, and this is what this budget undertakes, uh, is an enabler for long-term growth and maintains our standard of living. So our budget, uh, which uh, you know, part and parcel is, is, is represents our platform, and BCL 15, which is the blueprint, uh, is the you know one of the large first measures to uh, implement our infrastructure program, which will help grow our economy and strengthen our middle class. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debate.